How you doing? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about managing mental health after stopping drinking alcohol. And this video I'm going to be comparing. Um, the first, might let me just caveat something here. When I'm talking about mental health, I'm talking about it in terms of well-being. So um, how good you feel in your life, or how far you are away from from um, having a positive well-being in your life. Um, so from that perspective, I want to talk about comparing before and after booze um why i believe that uh there is i think a, a number one cause of well-being problems or mental health problems even in this world and i'm going to talk about the answers that lie in the dopamine sweet spot so first let me just talk about um what I mean before uh, about before and after drinking alcohol uh, I, in most of my stuff I can talk about from my own perspective which is where I have the most subjective viewpoint um, I can also talk about uh, people that I've coached people that um, are on the program you know from that so sort of, I'm coming at it from various different angles but mostly for from the perspective of people who want to improve their overall well-being so um, drinking alcohol in my opinion, uh, or taking any other mind-altering drugs is a very poor way of looking after your mental well-being, uh, looking after your mental health. I think it takes you in the opposite direction. Um, I think it makes you incapable of dealing with your problems effectively. And that's one of the, the, the issues um, that I used to find with my own, dealing with my own well-being or trying to feel happy in life was um figuring out how to deal with problems and you know one of these things if if you start drinking at a young age that's what you learn uh, that's how i learned how to deal with problems was not to deal with the problems themselves but to if i couldn't deal with them to, to hide away from the problem in alcohol and what problems do you know how to solve when you're when you're a kid you know when i started drinking first i was when i had my first drink i was 12 but when i started drinking properly I was 18, 19 years of age. That's still a kid, you know. You've got no experience of life. You, you know, how do you deal with problems without experience of life? Um, you know, you can go and ask somebody else, and you know, there's there's a lot of different ways of doing this. But with there are certain problems in your life which you don't want to ask anyone else. You know, it's embarrassing, or it's you know, especially you know, for me as a young man, I had a huge ego. You know, there's you have a huge sort of um, your reputation to protect, you know, all of those kind of things. And so when you can't deal with these problems or you, you maybe you don't even see that you've got a problem with these things, um, I think it the alcohol makes it much more difficult to to even um, to even address the problems that you've got, never mind dig down into them. So um I think yes, when you do eliminate the the alcohol, so this is the afterwards. I think it's the, one of the only ways that you're really going to start enjoying your life and to start um, making sense of things. Uh, I think alcohol just makes a mess of everything. And yes, when you do stop drinking alcohol, you're going to have you're going to come from the perspective of um, having to face your problems full on, right? Having to face the issues in your life full on but at least now you've got a solid platform for dealing with them even if you don't know these if, even if you haven't got the skills yet to to deal with your problems right this is you know if i can condense the things that i've done in the last nine years it's been focusing and concentrating my energies on learning those skills um, to deal with my own problems i mean a lot of the stuff that i teach I mean, most of the stuff that i teach it has been is a result of that process of me trying to um, to deal with problems that I should have dealt with, I should have had the knowledge of when I was 20 years of age or 24, 25, you know, that kind of thing. You, you know, you get them through life experience, but um, you know, when you've got a, a, a tool like alcohol at your disposal, or you have that mentality that you want to, that, that you see alcohol as a tool in that perspective, then it shuts down that avenue because as soon as you have something that you don't want to, think about you don't want to deal with then you've got this easy way of getting past this uh of, of just escaping from life you know 
Um, and that's generally what we're, we're talking about here, escapism. Just as a side note here, we're nearly at the end of these 100 videos. I've really enjoyed doing them. I've learned a lot about myself and about the process and just about what, what sort of, uh, what people want to see um, from doing these 100 videos. The last time I did this actually was, it must be five, six, seven years ago, maybe seven years ago. And I did a, a video a day for a year and that was tough. Um, that was tough going. I mean, I, I found this one tough going to, to keep the 100 videos a day. Just, I think more so now because I've got so much more going on in the background. I've got, we're trying to um, really fill out a lot more of the, the, the stuff on the, on the program, on the platform. So that's what I'll be focusing on. So even though the 100 videos a day is finished or 100 videos a day, 100 videos, um, one a day has finished, then we will, we're going to go on, we're still going to carry on publishing videos. So there'll be probably one a week for the foreseeable future just to uh, relax the content. And like I said, I need to concentrate mostly on, on the other stuff. So um, if you want to, we've still got the quick start guide, uh, the quick start preparation guide that's down below. Uh, it's absolutely free. And it's for me, it's um, it, this is from our program. This is we've taken out. We've got a 15 day preparation um, module in the program, but we've also got the quick start guide for anyone who wants to um, who wants to really skip over a lot of the stuff. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do in the 15 days is gradually cutting down your drinking, getting you in the right mindsets. And there's a lot of detailed inner work that we sort of try and get done before you hit day one so that by the time you hit day one that you're in a much better place mentally to to step across that line um the quick start guide is is basically a shortened version of that so it's less than an hour uh, and i don't know how much is on the 15 days it's probably they're probably the bones of of uh of 10 hours anyway um and it's designed to give you a bit of clarity about where you are and where you're going to go and give you the confidence to step across that line and really the courage to step across that line and to be honest the the, the quick start guide is it, we use it for in the program for um the preparation in case of the preparation but it's it's also there if you if you need a refresher on why you're doing this and to give you a clarity on where you are in that moment so we also encourage people to go back and look at these videos when they get to the end of 30 days or the end of 60 days or so on and so forth whenever the feeling that they're, they're losing some motivation in their life to go back to that. So that's there, that's down below. You know, you don't have to pay for that, it's free. Um, and uh, yeah, if you, you know, want to get, if you want to carry on the one day video, uh, video in a day, uh, every day, then we've got Habits Unplugged. You know, our, our program gives you a video a day for a year, so you can go for that. Anyway, I think that one of the, the big reasons why people, um, why they fail in this thing is because they're trying to get rid of emotions uh you know mixed emotions you know life is just full of emotions up and down left and right whatever you know it's you've got a mixed bag of emotions that are there and people try and get rid of the of the the emotions that are causing them uh, what they call down emotions or negative emotions or whatever way you want to call it so anger uh depression anxiety fear all of those kind of things you know Mixed emotions are a part of life. You know, you're gonna have shit days. You're gonna have discomfort. You're gonna have anxiety. It's all part of life. Uh, it's all part of life for everyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care what part of life, what where you think you are in life. You're gonna have these shit days. You're gonna have discomfort. You're gonna have anxiety. You know, and it's a. I think this is a huge part, if not the number one cause of modern mental health issues modern well-being issues that need to uh, eliminate anxiety eliminate discomfort eliminate fear best to look with that you know because you just cannot cannot do that you know it's this is how we see things it's part of the perception it's part of the attitude it's part of the beliefs it's part of uh, not necessarily that these things are, are coming up, that these we're getting these emotions, but it's how we're reacting and how we're responding to these things. That's what matters. Like I said, these are not negative things. These negative emotions are not negative things in your life. They're, they're there for a purpose. You know, I, I spent so much of my life believing that I wanted to, I needed to get rid of anxiety altogether. I needed to push anxiety away from 
myself that I, you know, any anxiety in my life, any, any fear meant something was wrong with me and was wrong with the life that I was living that, um, only, uh, a no anxiety life, a no fear life was, was the only way to go forward. That if I wasn't happy a hundred percent of the time that there was something wrong, you know, uh, and, and that's the, that's the, the big, um, I think that's the big flaw in that, in that kind of thinking is, you know, there, there is no happiness. I mean, you cannot have happiness all the time. The pursuit of happiness, I think, is a good thing, right? You're pursuing happiness. But, you know, the, I think the, the, is it the Constitution of the United States says that they guarantee you the right to pursue happiness. They don't guarantee you the right to be happy. They guarantee you the right to pursue happiness. And that's a great goal to have or a great drive to have, you know, to have that. I'm able to go out and I'm, I'm able to pursue happiness in my life. I'm able to try and get as much happiness as I can get in my life. But understand that there's, there are no um, positive emotions without negative emotions. It's like saying um, that there is no, that you're trying to get lightness all the time in your life. You know, if to get daylight, you've got to understand nighttime, right? There's that both same thing with light and heavy um with hard and soft with uh, all those kind of things in life that there's opposites in life so that brings me to what i call the dopamine sweet spot so we're looking here for a dopamine sweet spot right this is a sweet spot in life between inevitable pain and pleasure right so you've got the pleasure first and then you've got the inevitable pain that follows the pleasure Right, so think about it as um, this is reflected in something called the dopamine balance. So when you have pleasure, you're getting like a, an injection of dopamine into your dopamine re uh, receptors, right? Um, once that's fired off, you're going to get a balance on the side of pain to an equal amount, right? So the same amount of pleasure you get, you're going to have a tilting back to the opposite way of pain. It's probably pain is probably not a great way of doing this, but discomfort or things that you, you when you get something that you like, you get a dopamine hit to that side. You're going to get something on the opposite side to something that you, you don't really care for that much, you know. So think about drinking and then on the opposite side, you've got the hangover or, you know, the come down or whatever way you want to describe it, right, with withdrawal. Right. With every time you get excitement in your life, you're going to have the opposite way. You're going to have boredom. Right. This is just the, the, the part of life. And the more you take of a drug, the more dopamine hit you get. So the bigger the hit, the more come down you've got on the opposite side. But the more that you take, you get the tolerance level. So this is with most things in life. If you do something over and over and over again, whether it's any, any behavior, most behaviors that are, uh, that are satisfactory, that are, that are giving you pleasure, you will get a, a, a spike in your dopamine um, but you will also get a tolerance level. And the tolerance is that the same amount of dopamine is not giving you the same amount, the same hit as it was before. So you're getting less and less of a pleasure sensation from the same dopamine hit, but you're getting the same backlash, right? And eventually what you, you find happens is that you, you need to take this drug just to feel normal, not to feel that big spike that you had in the first place. Right. You know, and, and this is a weird one with alcohol because I remember the first time I drank and there was no spike. You know, that was a learned spike for me. When I first drank alcohol, it was, oh yeah, I'm feeling daring and I'm, I'm doing something which is, uh, sort of, I'm getting a spike from the, from the, the peer pressure or giving into that peer pressure. But I remember puking my guts out and thinking, this is not good. I don't like this. My head's spinning around and all that kind of stuff. So that wasn't a pleasurable thing. That was the downside. So I don't, I don't know how it works with that one. So the way I look at, at this dopamine sweet spot is, uh, I call it contentment. So this is where I'm not taking anything which is spiking my dopamine anymore. So my dopamine levels have come back to normal and I'm not getting that big seesaw, you know, the massive seesaw that I was getting before. So now, yeah, I do get pleasurable moments and I do get moments where um, there's a bit of displeasure in my life. You know, I hate doing things like the washing. I hate cleaning up. I hate, 
I don't like boredom. I don't get much boredom now, but there's certain things in my life that I don't like doing. You know, with these videos and stuff, I love uh, researching the videos. I love making the videos. I hate doing the editing of the videos. I hate doing all that posting that is required in the background. And some of the research is, is, is boring, you know? So that's part of this pain and pleasure thing. But in general, I'm looking for a life where I've got contentment, which is, I, I'm, I'm feeling good about things. I'm feeling good about myself, right? There is a, there is a balance in my life. Um, and that's one of the things that we teach is that balance across all of your areas. I think if you, if you, there's so many different areas of your life that you need to work on sort of simultaneously. Um, you know, not at the same time, but in general, as you're building your life, as you're building towards this feeling of well-being and towards that best possible version of yourself, you need to create a balance across everything. You know, one of the big things that I, I, have neglected um, in the past was the spiritual side of my life. And I'm not talking about religion, you know, out with religion. I'm talking about the big questions that you, that you have about life in general, about the world, about your place in, in, in the world, about our place in the, in the universe. You know, those big questions, that for me is a spiritual experience. You know, digging down inside yourself, digging down into, um, into meaning, personal meaning, is a spiritual experience. But there's all, all the other areas, right, in life. So you've got your habits, your family, your finances, your career, all of those things that you need to work on these um, together. If you, if you focus your mind on just one thing and you say to yourself, I'm gonna be the best possible version of myself in this one area, then you're missing out on so much in life and you're never gonna to get to that best possible version of yourself because life is about that, it's about balance. So, so I, I think one of the things that you have to do is you have to walk in life as an individual. That's not saying that you, you cannot be uh, part of social groups and that you cannot have a social life. And you know, it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, I, th I, I love the, the people in my life without them. You know, I'm up in the mountains here for uh, three days while Esther is away in Holland. And I love this, I love the solitude, but there's a part of me that feels um, isolated and lonely when I'm away like this for, for you know, even for three or four days. Um, I'll get a lot of work done, I get a, a lot of thinking done, but at the same time, it's great to have a friendly face in the evening to go home to, you know, and to, to have that connection. But I think the, the only way that you can really understand who you are yourself, the only way that you can be who you truly are um, is to separate yourself from the crowd sometimes and to have that as being the basis of your life that you are an individual even if you're a part of a crowd but you are still an individual right you're never going to find a lot of that deep reflection in the crowd you know that one of the guys i've been studying lately has been uh, kierkegaard who said that those who seek the crowd are emasculated by the crowd you know that those people that are seeking safety and security above everything else that they're you know they don't want they want to have a secure life where nothing is is challenged you know they're not challenged um their ideas about life are not challenged um that they want to follow a leader and what the leader says goes that's not that's not a good life kierkegaard says that in in those circumstances the individual dies a thousand deaths and I, I can understand sort of where he's coming from with that, you know, because, you know, every time that you, every time that you think that you're heading somewhere, you have a, a, an individual thought, it's pushed out by the, the, the crowd narrative, you know, which is, I think this is why so many people are drinking alcohol these days. So many people are taking a drug. So many people need a drug because they, it's for this escapism. They can't face themselves anymore, so they have to hide away from themselves. And that's so sad, but I think one of the solutions to that, one of the solutions to mental health problems or to, um, to finding that general upward trend in your own well-being is to really start to dig down inside yourself. You know, not to hide from the shit that's going on inside you, but to sort of pull it out, prise it apart, see what's making it tick. You know see what's what's keeping it alive and you know you'll find that a lot of this stuff that you're thinking is nonsense 
that a lot of it is based on misinterpretation, your misinterpretation of things, or you know, a lot of the things that you know, there's a common there's a commonality of the the, the ideas and the the frames that we look at things in life that are just handed to us unquestioned. We don't question them. We're handed to us by our parents, by our society, by so many different things in our lives, and we don't question that. You know, and everyone's guilty of that to a certain degree. Uh, you know, guilty is a strong word. Um, everyone has this in their lives, but it's only by digging down into yourself and, and sort of, I think first of all, you have to understand where you're going in terms of this is who I want to be, right? And you know, that's, is another bag of fish, right? In the sense that you have to, uh, you can only understand who you want to be from the perspective of who you are now. Uh, and as you get more experience in this and you go forwards in life and you learn more about yourself, the more that that, it, that definition in itself will open up for you and you, your, your idea about who you want to be will change. But it's only by digging into yourself and pulling these things apart um, asking yourself, why am I doing this? And is this the right way of doing things that, that you can really get down to that? I know this is getting a bit, a bit mad now, so I'm going to end it here. But like I said, I want to, you know, we started off this video just comparing before and after. And I can tell you now that, you know, if, if you want to go dark and light, um, heavy and, uh, and light, um, before and after me drinking alcohol. And I think this for most people that I come in contact with, that what they do once they get a handle on who they are and where they're going, and that they never needed alcohol in the first place, uh, certainly don't need it now, but they never did need it. Um, I think that's, that's a, a turning point in most people's lives when they can, they can separate those things. And it is, it's the, the, one of the biggest reasons why I never say, this is the day that I started that I stopped drinking alcohol. I do say it sometimes, but I, I don't mean it that way. I always try and say, this is the day that I started my new journey. And it's because that, that day when I stopped drinking alcohol, it was the definite um, change in direction of my life um, from a slipping downward slope towards something which has got sort of approximation of moving upwards all the time, you know, and that contentment in life. Uh, and like I say, I think one of the biggest issues, the mental health problems, is when people are trying to get rid of anxiety in their life, trying to get rid of these negative emotions, but the negative motion, emotions serve a purpose. You have to keep that in mind, that your negative emotions are there designed to, to push you in, in a certain direction. It's why the laws are there, you know? Look at the laws of a country. Most laws, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. I'm thinking of doing a video on the Ten Commandments. I think that will stir up a few people, but um, not from the re religious perspective, just as uh, as an idea is floating around in my head. But you get what I mean? The, these are these are things that, that are not only designed to protect the people around you, but to, to protect you, yourself. And then I talked about the dopamine sweet spot, which for me is contentment. It's not taking something outside of yourself to influence what goes on inside. So you're not taking something which will give you that big dopamine hit in the beginning, but then just causes so many problems down the road that you're bringing your dopamine levels back up to what they normally should be. And then you deal with life on the perspective of intelligence and common sense and um, rationality and um, self-determination that you're dealing with things the way that you know how to do this. And this requires work. It, it, it needs a lot of work. You know, a lot of you thinking about yourself, you thinking about um, what you need to do, um, but you will get it to that stage. Um, the next video is, uh, if you want to look at another video, five changes to expect after you stop drinking alcohol for more than 30 days. I think this will give you a good idea about uh, where you should be after 30 days. You know, not just in terms of the stopping drinking alcohol, but where you'll be on that journey that I was talking about. So I'm going to end it there for today. Speak to you again in the next video. Almost gonna put bye now.